So this is a follow-up video to my now infamous video that you've probably already watched already. And the reason why I'm making this video is because there's a lot of misinformation and misinterpretation that's gone out about this particular subject. And I'm here to kind of put everything straight. As you can tell, I do this quite a bit. And I go around stadium tours and I give my honest thoughts about them. At no point did I ever criticise either team staff or either team's football clubs. I actually went on record to say that I recommended them both. That not only you can check on the videos, but in the various newspaper outlets. Whilst my video was polarising to some, the vast majority of you saw the funny side of it and I actually got praise from both sides. But the negative comments that I received have been predominantly from one side of the city only. And whether that's typical or not, I kind of thought to myself, boy, why are the Rangers fans so salty about all of this? I actually recommended the Ibrox tour and I still do. What's the problem? I couldn't understand why they were all so salty and so aggressive, given that most of them hadn't actually watched the video yet. And then my old high school friend Ainsy, shout out to Ainsy of course, told me that Stan Collymore had just retweeted my video. And I was like, I haven't put my video on Twitter. So I checked his account and apparently there's a two minute clip of my video, my entire video is 24 minutes of course, that has been cut specifically to make Rangers look really bad and Celtic look really good. Obviously, I didn't do this. This cut of the video indicates that Rangers staff and their fans have been incredibly unwelcoming and unfortunately that's not the case. I've been on record to say that the tour guide at Rangers was very nice to me. I actually wrote a letter of apology to Rangers this morning because obviously this two minute snippet of my 24 minute video has been taken a little bit out of context and is not indicative of my opinion. But there's no denying that the overwhelmingly negative response I have is from Rangers fans. And they've accused me of various things which I'm going to address for you right now. The fact that I was all over social media and that the Celtic staff knew I was coming. It's plausible. It's possible. I mean, obviously I didn't take pictures of me and put it on social media, that would have ruined the entire jig, but it's entirely plausible that they knew I was coming based upon that. I even mentioned in the video that I thought the first guy that I met knew that I wasn't a Rangers fan straight away, but then again, I don't exactly look or sound like a Rangers fan anyway, so both teams pretty much had that advantage. This picture that went viral of me, my collars aren't showing, but obviously, throughout the tour, my collars slipped out. That's regrettable, and it, it's, it's possible that they knew that I was wearing a Celtic shirt underneath. It could have been a normal green polo shirt, but it's entirely possible that they knew that I wasn't a real Rangers fan because of the collar sticking out. Entirely possible. At this point, we can only speculate, because we don't know that. I don't know that. You don't know that. The only people that do know are the Celtic Park staff. But let me address the things that aren't possible. I've been accused by Rangers fans that I'm a compulsive liar, that I made up all of that stuff about Rangers and that it didn't actually happen. Some of my fellow tour mates accused me of fabricating things, like the car horns being blared at me. Well, let me ask you a question. Why would I lie? Really? Why would I lie about that? I actually got an apology from a Rangers fan indicating that he blared his horn and waved his finger at me. I didn't see the finger, of course, I just heard the horn, but the point is, it happened. And if it didn't happen, I wouldn't have reported on it. Why would I lie? And furthermore, if I was abused by a Celtic fan or punched in the face by a Celtic fan, do you not think I would have reported that? That I came up with an agreement with Celtic Football Club before I even came to Glasgow. I don't know where you got that from, but it's the conspiracy theory of the tinfoil hat variety. Rangers fans, let's say that you're correct. Let's say, hypothetically, that I'm a compulsive liar. Let's say, hypothetically, that I fabricated things. That the Celtic staff knew I was coming. That they knew I wasn't a real Rangers fan because of the collar sticking out. Let's say, hypothetically, that I came up with an agreement with Celtic Football Club beforehand. Let's say that everything that you said was true. Hypothetically, let's say that it's true. Why don't we put it to the test? I challenge you to go to Celtic Park, 
take the tour in your Rangers shirt because you are actually Rangers fans, not an Asian English imposter like me. I challenge you to do the tour. Don't antagonize them because I never did. And if you show me one tread of video evidence, just one, that they will mistreat you or that they have mistreated you because you're an actual Rangers fan, I'll pull my recommendations of them. It's a fair cop, right? You think I'm full of crap? Fine. Prove me wrong. I thoroughly believe what David said, that they are a club that's open to all. I thoroughly believe that, and that's my opinion. And don't show me this, this and this. I've heard all about that, and I'm not saying that Celtic fans are perfect. They most certainly aren't. I've received some backlash from you Celtic folk that's just as bad as what I've received on the other side. You're letting the side down, guys. There's just one last point I'd like to address before I give my final thoughts, because I'm actually getting quite bored of reading your hateful comments. They're getting quite repetitive and kind of ready to move on. This is getting boring now. The one thing that both sides have accused me of is that I'm some form of attention-seeking whore. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Shh, do you want to know what it is? Come in, come in. I don't want people to look at me. I want them to look at you. I could care less about people looking at me. I couldn't give a damn. But I want people to see what Glasgow football fans are like and how they treat each other. I want people like kids who are looking to pick their football team to read these comments. Who are they going to pick? I want people all over the world to come and read these comments. I don't want them to watch this video. I want them to read these comments. And I want them to think, who should I pick? Corporate sponsors. If they're looking to pick between one or the other, who are they going to pick? And when people wonder whether or not the rivalry in Glasgow is real, they can look at all these comments and say, yeah, it's real. Do I want to be a part of that? That remains to be seen. Final thoughts. My final thoughts are that Rangers and Celtic are both excellent football clubs. They're both excellent organisations. Their stadium tours are very good and that the staff treated me nicely in both clubs. That's my official stance and I've gone on the record to say that. Before the video was released, one set of fans were significantly more negative and abusive than the other. After the video released, that multiplied. And if you think I'm wrong about that, fine, prove me wrong. Would I support Rangers or Celtic after this experiment? No, I still wouldn't support either team. I prefer one team's stadium tour over another, but that's it. Now guys, I'm going to wrap it up there because you're probably bored of me yammering on if you've even got to this part of the video. And if you're wondering where my PSG video is, it's being uploaded this Friday, so check that out. It's probably going to be the last stadium tour I'm going to do before um, the end of the year. Give me your thoughts on the comment section below, and if I get enough suggestions for other bucket list ideas, I will go and do that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.